Hello and welcome back everyone to our discussion of window functions in SQL. We have already spent some time <clears throat> on the topic, I'm sorry about that, but there is more to stay. And in particular, the focus has been, uh, let me enlarge my pointer here, the focus has been on the order by uh, uh, specifications here, the frames that we have uh, uh, specified for our windows and also the partitioning. So the focus has been on this part of the syntactic window function construct. But now let's turn our focus on the window functions themselves. Uh, as of now, we have only used aggregate functions in place of f in all of our examples. And that's indeed one kind of window function that you may specify when you are working with window functions. We have already learned that such aggregate functions f in this particular place will process all the rows in the frame. Whatever falls into the frame of the current row, the aggregate function will see it, will aggregate it according to its semantics, and that will be the result of the entire window function call. But there is more. There is these two further types of window functions that we haven't seen yet and that operate entirely different from the aggregate functions. This is row access. So it makes sense to talk about the row just before the current row, just after the current row, the row that is the first or the last in the frame, the row that, that is three rows before the current row and so on. Because all these uh, frame and partition, uh, partition constructs uh, incur a well-defined order, it makes sense to, to talk about such row position or positioned row access either in absolute or relative positions. Absolute regarding the frame, relative regarding the current row. And this is something that we will talk about in a series of examples because it really makes a difference. Really gives us a flavor of ordered access around the current row, ordered access inside a table, which can really make a difference for many uh, algorithmic problems out there. And then there's the uh, feature of row ranking, which will assign numeric ranks, numeric positions in a ranking to all of the rows inside a partition. And this can be very valuable input for further processing steps. Once you know that uh, given a particular criterion, this is the highest or the lowest ranking row or an average ranking row, or this row would rank in the top 20%, this can also make all the difference for further algorithmic insights. And uh, the rest of the uh, chapter five discussion of window functions will indeed focus on these two items. There is a lot of stuff to be covered here, so we will need a few videos to do just that. But uh, let's not uh, uh, lose any more minute and jump into the first window functions that um, support row access, ordered row access, and in this case, it's access relative to the current row, all right? So window functions are evaluated row, current row by current row, and the functions, the window functions lag and lead, allow us to look uh, before the current row, that would be the task of the lag function, and it may, uh, it, uh, they allow us to look in front of the current row, that would be the lead function. So lag and lead is really a pair of functions. These are sister functions that come together and that act very uh, um, uh, similarly. All right. So uh, of course, we had expected this particular piece of the syntax, the specification of the ordering, which is really crucial when we talk about ordered access. Uh, two rows, all right. Uh, there is also partitioning because this ordered access, as we will see also in examples, does respect partitioning, all right. Uh, you don't see any frame specification here because for the lag and lead window functions, the frame specifications are indeed irrelevant. It's all about the ordering of the rows and to make sense about a notion of looking at an offset of plus or minus n before or after the current row. So this is how the lag function call would look like. 
right? We would of course specify a distance, a distance from the current row, all right? And we would expect uh, some natural number here. So a distance of zero doesn't make much sense, but a lag of one would access the row just before the current row in this well-defined ordering. A lag of two will look two rows behind us. All right. Similarly, a lead of one row will one look one row in uh, in front uh, regarding the uh, the uh, the ordering. All right. When we look at this particular row, we have the opportunity to evaluate expression E for this looked at row. So we will evaluate expression E for the row that is n rows behind us in the lag case. We will ex evaluate expression E for the row that is n rows in front of us in the lead case. Okay, so this can be really interesting. It gives us the opportunity to look behind us and in front of us in the in the ordering. Uh, so it gives us a handle to explore the context around the current row. Okay. These uh, functions lag and lead, as already uh, indicated here by the presence of the partition keyword, they indeed respect partitioning. So we cannot use lag or we cannot use lead to access rows outside of our current partition. All right. If we do that, this function will instead return the default value d, which is null if d is not present in this function call. So d is an option parameter that is by default null. All right. So no row access outside the scope of the partition. We will get the value d if we try to do that. Okay. All right, so uh, I think I brought a sketch with me. Yes, I brought a sketch with me uh, uh, that uh, characterizes this situation. So we've got the target table here, and it has been ordered by A. All right, so this is crucial. Otherwise, it makes no sense to talk about earlier or later rows. Currently, no partitioning in this sample table, but I brought an example with me that uses partitioning, and we will see the effect and the interplay of lag and lead and the partitioning. All right. If this is our current row, as always in our uh, sketches here, then indeed this would be the row that lags two rows behind. So if row four is the current row, then row two would lag two rows behind. And we would be able to evaluate this expression, which I have not specified further here, with, with this expression for this particular row. This expression will yield a value, all right, and this would be the value of our lag function call. All right, as you can see, if I lag four rows behind, then I'm actually leaving the table. So uh, there is no row that lags four rows behind our current row, so we would receive the default value D here. And the situ situation is just symmetrical if we look forward, if we use the lead function. All right. Looking too far ahead will yield the default value. In its absence, it defaults to null. And as you can see, the n, the distance from the current row, is also an optional parameter. If we omit it, then we talk about the row that is immediately in front of us or immediately behind us. So this is the behavior of lag and lead. And of course, it all depends on these offsets and these offsets all depend on the ordering. All right, so let's look at uh, the real term in here, uh, terminal here and the real SQL code. Um, um, this is a query that I would like to use to exercise the lag and lead window functions. Uh, and uh, it's specified over the table W, our playground table. Let me remind you of the contents of the W table. All right, uh, this is the well-known table that has a column A that we can use as a ordering criterion and a column B that is very conveniently to use as a partitioning criterion. And we will do that. And of course, we have the explicit annotation here, the row annotation that lets us tell the individual rows apart. This would be the input table. All right, and this is just the query. Of course, we are using a window clause that using uh, that uses an order by clause. Otherwise, relative 
position-based row access doesn't make much sense. A is our ordering criterion and we also specify a partitioning criterion here so that we can see the effect of the partitioning uh, on lag and lead and that they indeed respect that they indeed respect the partition boundaries. All right, so what we are doing here is just output information about the current row and then also um, information about the row just one behind the current row. And uh, just to see which row lies behind us, we will just emit its row identifier and also the row just in front of us. If there is no such row, then we will return the no row uh, default value here. Does this make sense? Well, w.row, that's actually a textual com a column of type text containing this row identifier. So this will yield a value of type text. And this default value also is of type text. This makes sense. This lead function call will indeed in all cases yield a value of type text. Okay, so let's just run the thing and see what we get. All right, okay, so just as many rows as there are in the input table, that makes sense. And indeed we see the uh, partitioning has been performed, all right. And inside the partition we have an ordering according to the A value in ascending order. All right, that looks okay to me. So let's look at, uh, say, row five. Row five has a lag row, so a preceding row, immediately preceding row of row two, and indeed that's the case. And the lead row, the immediately following row of row five is uh, row three, and that's indeed the case. Yes, that's the case. So this looks good to me. For row two, things look a bit different because there is no lag row from the viewpoint of the row that comes first in the A ordering. There is no row, the default value is being output here, but the row R, R, R two, row two is followed by row five, and that's indeed the case. Okay, that looks good to me. At the other side of the partition boundary, we see the last row in the partition is row nine. It's preceded by row six, yes, but there is no following row uh, inside the partition, so we get no row here. And things look similarly in the white circle partition here. All right, so we indeed have access to the row immediately before us and immediately after us. Lag and lead, very, very useful. So let's look at one particular very simple use case for lag and lead here. Okay, and for that use case, let's revive, let's revive the, uh, the well-known map table. Okay, the map table that we used in the visibility experiments when we were looking at the view angles and performed a max scan in the hills, okay. If you recall, we had a map table that just contained X coordinates and altitude information. And that's actually what is being is found here in the first two columns also in the result that we are computing. Okay, so that would be the input of our query. And what this query indeed performs is a right right wards, a right facing walk through the hills. All right, so we will use the X coordinate of this input table as ordering criterion in ascending order. If we order the rows of the map table in ascending X order, we are effectively performing a right facing walk through the hills. This is our well-defined order. Now it makes sense to talk about rows of table M that lie before or lie after a particular row in table M. And that's what we are making use of. Here we just reproduce the information that we found in the current row M. But here we look just behind us. We look just behind us. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, we are looking just in front of us with the lead function. Okay. So we're looking just in front of us. You see this is the default value. I didn't need to specify that, uh, but uh, for clarity, we are looking just one row in front of us. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can see that, uh, that we indeed refer to the right facing to the right wards window. Okay. So for that row just in front of us, we look at the altitude and compare it or uh, subtract from that our own, the row, the altitude of the current row. Okay. All right. And now we are looking at the sign of this, dip, uh, of this difference. 
uh, if the sign is indeed negative, then the current altitude is larger, is larger than the altitude just in front of us. And we are actually going downhill. All right. So that would be an analysis of whether our right facing walk through the hills leads us downhill or uphill or maybe even. Okay, and that's what this query is trying to do. Uh, if indeed the sign is positive, then we are going uphill. If the sign is zero, then uh, the altitude at the, the position just right of us and our current altitude would be equal. So we would face an even walk. Maybe, maybe this lead function call looking to the right of us lead, uh, leads us outside of the map. So in this case, this lead function call would yield zero and the uh, entire uh, difference would yield zero and the sign call would yield zero. This would lead us to this else case in this case distinction and we would have just no clue uh, how how the march would uh, proceed, whether there will be an ascent or descent, we cannot tell. So we would just emit this question mark here. Okay. And so that we can indeed see what the height difference between our current position and the position that we are reaching next, right to us, indeed is in measured in meters, we will uh, just repeat this expression here and then indeed uh, print its value. All right. And this leads to this analysis of our march through the hills, whether it will be an ascending or descending march through the hills. I also brought this as a live example with me. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, here you can see this is just the query from the slides. We are walking. Uh, we are walking through uh, the hills at map M. Uh, here you can see that I've inlined the window definition. It's short anyway. It's just this order by call that uh, yields a right facing walk. Okay. And uh, yeah, then we look at the sign and emit the analysis of the ascent or descent uh, subtraction. Okay. So let's do that and see what we get here. Right. Okay, so our walk is even in the beginning and then try will climb until we reach the top of the hill where we then are let down into a valley rather steep and then super steep onto this peak, if you recall, at 80 meters, um, very steep. And when we have uh, crossed the peak, then it's going downhill again until we reach the end of the map where indeed the computation with the well, you write to us, to the right of us, has to yield zero and our analysis just shrugs. Okay, so that would be one example of the lead and lag computation in a SQL. All right, we will see many more uses of lag and lead in the upcoming videos. These are really versatile functions. Looking, exploring the context, looking at the context around the current row is really something that comes up again and again. All right. So stay tuned for uh, more fun examples of leg and lead in just the next video. Uh, until then, see you. Bye.